Dominic Sue, you might be off the hook because Vontez Perfect is easily the dirtiest player in the NFL. Uh, and his suspension was handed down from the NFL uh, as of yesterday, I believe. I'm sure he's going to appeal. So uh, this is elements 11 and 12. Jacory, I didn't put them in order for you. So 11 will go first to read you what the suspension is. In a news release, the league cited Burfick's most recent transgression, an unnecessary reference penalty with 22 seconds remaining in Saturday's AFC wildcard game against the Pittsburgh Steelers as the tipping point. On the play, Burfick and Steelers receiver Antonio Brown after Brown couldn't catch a high pass from Ben Roethlisberger. Brown currently is under the concussion protocol because of the hit. They continue to write to see how it affects. It will be a three-game suspension. If the ban is upheld, it will cost Burfick $502,000 of his 2016 base salary, and he will have forfeited $647,395 since just before the 2014 season when he signed a four-year, $20 million contract extension. The nice thing about suspensions in sports is that you also get fined because when you're suspended, you're suspended without pay. Wow. Now, instead of just fining him for the hit itself. Uh, three games, great. Good. Seems like the fair amount. Uh, but this also escalated because uh, Antonio Brown, Pac-Man Jones, Burfick, they were all buttonheads, man. Yeah. After after the game, after, uh, and on the internet, and on Instagram. The Bengals were heated, Twitter, man. They were. They were. Of course they were heated. Right. It was a filthy hit by Vontez Burfick. So, uh, number nine is Pac-Man Jones, who said this after the game. Antonio Brown was not hurt. I know he was faking. I think he need a Grammy Award for that one. Oh. God, if you're gonna if you're gonna deliver an insult, at least get the right award. Man. Antonio Brown responded with this before I get to rip into Pac-Man Jones for being, you know, the, as dumb as Montez Perfect. Uh, business is booming. Playoff win. Check the greatness. We the Check. best. Check. Business is bo hashtag business is booming. Hashtag AB84 Antonio Brown 84 for that one. What the Michael Jackson? Imagine Instagram hashtagging around. yourself, man. That is that is when you know you're a boss. What was your number? In, in hashtag FM4. FM04. I like that. Uh, no, I so. Won't. Uh, Pac-Man Jones, you are you're you're dumb for saying that because uh, he has a concussion, right? There was rumors going around too that like he said that he, uh, that Brown winked at him. No, he's probably blinking to try and figure out what the hell just happened and how I'm down. Maybe uh, maybe 0.01 percent chance I'm wrong about that. No, no. Ben Mag always goes to this. Believe the story that is most likely true. Right? Believe the hit. You have to just watch it. He didn't wink at him. Secondly, he has a concussion. He can't play next weekend. It was a dirty hit. Looks like you Dan mentioned too, and you watch that over and over again. When you see that slow motion part of it, he lifts his shoulder mm -hmm. into him. You cannot target a guy in the head with any part of your body. Oh, it wasn't helmet to helmet. It, wa it wasn't. It wasn't helmet to helmet. It was a clean hit. He was defenseless. He lifted his shoulder. It was filthy. Yes, Vontez Perfect did intercept a pass that almost sealed the win for them. Yes, Vontez Perfect is a good defensive player in the NFL. Maybe a great defensive player in the NFL. But any argument, and I mean any argument for Vontez Perfect not being a filthy player in the NFL, is asinine. And any argument in which you could try and deliver an insult towards Antonio Brown was just disregarded as, you, as soon as you said, give him a Grammy, which is for musicians, not acting. Right. Come on. That's really funny. That's the truth. That's a good point. That's a good, that's a good observation there, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, and by the way, perfect as I mentioned in the quote too, uh, his hit against the Ravens. I mean, against the Ravens on in the last week of the season, uh, in in all the way back to I believe Arizona State University, right? Back, back to his ASU days. It's not like this is news. Yeah. Perfect was never a clean player, and I get that. I get that. There's not clean players in the NFL, but just the 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 overwhelming debate of was it dirty. Absurd. You deserve every single suspension. You deserve the games. You deserve the fine. Uh, I, I can't believe I'm forgetting. He was the guy who took out Le'Veon Bell earlier in the mm -hmm. year. He dug his shoulder. He dug his knee into Ben Roethlisberger on the sack. Forget it, man. On the sack or on the sack? <laughs> on the sack. <laughs> um, ah, they're all. Yeah, so, he's got a history of doing this. There's no doubt about it. No this. doubt about the history. So, uh, and by the way, he spits on players, according to Ramon Foster, an offensive lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers, who did an interview with uh, the, the fan over in Pittsburgh radio. How, un how common is that, though, um, for somebody to spit on another guy, especially with you linemen, where you're down there where people can't see what's going on? Is it, is it really that uncommon, and is it really that big of a deal uh, for, for that play to have occurred like that? It's, it's uncommon, and I think it's a huge deal, man. Spitting on somebody is a, is a huge offense, in my opinion. Uh, man, he wasn't the only guy. I, I will say that he had another culprit out there with him, but um, 
it's, it's very disrespectful. I think if you're out in public and somebody does that to you, man, um, like I said, the, the game is meant for somebody to spit on you. Has there been stuff in the past where other guys have played in this league and, you know, there's been accusations of that happening? Yeah. Um, but you, you take that as a sign of, of major disrespect. I don't care what venue you're in, basketball, football, hockey, or if you're at your, your neighborhood bar, um, spitting on somebody is unacceptable. And for well, you just get spit on. Uh, I mean, so let me touch base on this really quick. Um, I absolutely agree. Spitting on someone is the most disrespectful thing you can ever do. I would rather, I, there was many people I've played with in my life that say they'd rather have a broken leg. I know that's a little far-fetched than be spat on. But being spat on is so disgusting. It is like you're transferring your liquid onto someone because you disregard them. You, you, would, rather, you would rather have your saliva land on their body than have them look at you or do anything with you. It is gross. I hate it. It is so bad. I've been spat on playing football in this country and people didn't understand how few... Well, people do. Trust me, there is a lot of people do. But my teammates, some of them did not understand how infuriated I was. I had to be held back by this massive guy. He was six foot five. He had to stop me from getting through because that's how furious I was. But I'm telling you, all seriousness, it's the worst thing you can do to someone. I believe a fellow athlete as well. So disrespectful. Disgusting. Horrible. Despicable. Despicable. Oh, God. Anything Gross. you can put your face like this. Make the smallest face you can possibly make. There it is. <laughs> You're so good at that. <laughs> Good talent. Uh, so uh, the, the bigger question for the comment section mostly is, uh, is, should Marvin Lewis and all NFL coaches be responsible for their players when these type of things happen? And how do you prevent this type of thing? Obviously, suspensions and fines are one way to, to hand it down. And you can't suspend a guy 16 games for a dirty hit. We know that. Even a, a, a series of dirty hits throughout a season, uh, you can't suspend a guy 16 games. That would be ridiculous. But, uh, you know, I've gotten over my, my hate of the I love the NFL excuse, can't watch this anymore. I get that. I get that. But what can we do media-wise? What can coaches do? What can the NFL do? What could Roger Goodell do? Yeah, and as you mentioned, there, it, 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 there's a massive spotlight on the sport because, of course, the recent movie, Concussion. So mm. you've got to think to yourself, how do you try and eliminate any risk of people shining even more light on trying to adjust the sport or trying to change it? And... This is not a great example of, uh, of how this can bring a negative light to it. No, sorry, this is a great example of how this can bring further light to it because it's a bad hit. It's going to further impose concussions and it's only going to allow for people who are already trying to adjust the sport, and rightly so, depending on how your views are towards health on it, are just going to take this as even more of a, uh, a stronger pursuit in their case. Like, look what happened here. This is going to happen more often. So, especially with Will Smith, tell the truth. You tell the truth. Tell the truth. I got it. First of all, you can watch us all on watchable.com, which you can also see other TYT network related shows like Pop Trigger, our pop culture channel, What the Flick, our movie channel, and of course, TYT Sports. We're trying to get everywhere and anywhere that is digital media, and watchable is one of the great places you can go watch us for free. Please go check out watchable.com. We'll make sure to leave all the description, uh, all the links in the description below so you can check it out there. Uh, but I got it, man. I know how to stop concussions the in the NFL. I know how to stop dirty hits. You invite Joey Ryan, the king of the penis flip move. You do a concussion, you get flipped by Joey Ryan's wiener. <laughs> Comment below with what you think. <laughs> we'll see you next time.